I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. I'm Steph. And I'm Ant. We're Nerdazons. So we are back this fortnight with my choice. So I have chosen to do Infernal Affairs 2002 Hong Kong film against the departed 2006 American film. And what a choice it was. Yes, I actually think this is the first choice that neither of us, uh, that both of us haven't seen either of the films. Mm Mm-hmm. So it was a clean slate for the two of us to actually watch this. I'd always heard of The Departed, and I always get the shocked face, like, when I say I haven't seen it. (laughs) Same. And then my partner's seen Infernal Affairs so many times, and I think it's one of his favourites, and he's been getting me to try and watch it for a long time. So it's my excuse to finally get around to watch it. So it was actually his choice? Yep. And my next month's choice is also another listener choice. So let's get started and I'll read the synopsis for Infernal Affairs, Hong Kong, 2002. A story between a mole in the police department and an undercover cop. Their objectives are the same, to find out who is the mole and who is the cop. Firstly, I want to say, wow. Mm -hmm. I was so, this movie was so intense from the get-go it, and it was done in such a right way with every little step throughout the film, every stage of the film, there was a new element that had me on the edge of my seat of like, oh, my God, are they going to get caught? I was rooting for the undercover cop the whole way through. So was I. Yeah, and I was like, this is the first film in a very long time, I mean a very long time, that has shocked me with the ending because I was not expecting it. And I liked that about it. It actually threw me off my guard. And I was so gutted. (laughs) Because my mates at work were like, oh, what episode are you doing for, you know, your podcast? And I said, oh, I'm doing Infernal Affairs and The Departed. And my mate was like, oh, have you seen it before? I said, no. Like, "Mm." thinking to myself, oh, you know, it's. It was when it was peak Leonardo DiCaprio. It was all about Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Still like Leo, but I think it was in his prime. And I, from the trailer, it kind of looked really dated. And I was mm. just like, oh, no, nah, it's just going to be another, you know, 90s cop or early 2000s cop film. And that they were so shocked. And I got the, like, what you've yeah. never seen. Do you so, know? I actually didn't even know who was in it. I didn't even go and watch a trailer. And then every person that came through, my partner's like, yep, it's an all-star cast. And I was just like, I was shocked at how many people were in it. By the time Mark Wahlberg come up, I was just like, what? Yeah, I know. (laughs) Obviously, I watched this one first because my friends were like, well, it's it's a mad surprise. Like, you have to watch the Hong Kong one first. Yes. I agree, one hundred percent. Otherwise, otherwise that'll be spoiled for you. And yes, they were saying my friend who's seen all four of the Departed um, Infernal Affairs movies, which I didn't know that it was a trilogy. I didn't or, know either. <laughs> or, or whatever you call a four of movies, Quad- a quadrilogy. Quadrilogy, new word. <laughs> Hashtag quadrilogy. Copyright um, by no designs. <laughs> And so when I watched this film, I was captivated from, like, the very beginning. And, oh, actually, haha, speaking of the very beginning, fun fact, did you know that the theme song was actually sung by Andy Lau, who played Inspector Lau Kim Ming, and Tony Chow Wa Lang? My apologies. Um, Chen Wen Yang did the duet for the cover of the theme song. Nice. I had no idea. I know I, I have heard. So my partner's background is his family are from Hong Kong. So I have heard them talk about Andy Lau and how he has spoken that uh, song before. But I didn't know he actually did the music to this. That's pretty cool. Yeah, right. Pretty talented. And to, to have that connection that they are playing cat and mouse with each other, to then yes. do a duet together. That yeah. just it adds really to the cool. element. Yeah. That whole something that I liked about this one was the in the beginning, you actually saw them connect in the music store. 
Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really, really good touch because I think in different circumstances they would have been really good friends. They Mm seem to understand each other on a whole. They connected through a musical level and, like, the same appreciation for certain sounds and certain songs. I thought it was really obvious in the expressions on their faces, especially with um, Chen Wen Yang when Lao Kin is like, oh, listen to it in this one. It sounds much better. And he was just like, whoa, my mind is blown. And it's just – it was nice to – for them to take a step away from their intense lives and to just have that appreciation. And then they also connected through that. I thought that was a really good scene. It was just a small scene. It wasn't very big. I think it lasted like three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was just perfect for the characters. Another really good thing about this film is that I liked that they told us who the mole was and who the undercover cop was. I liked that story because it would have made this storyline way too confusing yes. and yeah. and I believe like it wouldn't have worked out as well and yeah. also that's one less thing that I had to, <laughs> had to think about in that film. Had to think. I actually think that plot line this is an ingenious plot line the person who created it wow because when I watched that the intro was really good it was good to provide you the enough context that you needed for the film and to progress the film to the points that you needed to get to without having Mm -hmm. to go on too long so the whole montage of them at the temple of like you know you've got clean records I want you to go in there but then when you go into the um, police academy and then you see how good a detective um, Chen Wing Yan is and I thought that that was a really good, it obviously built the story for you, but I just, Mm -hmm. I remember when I watched it and my mouth just dropped because I was just like, I never even thought of putting an undercover mole into the police force. Like, you always watch movies where it's about a crooked cop who's just getting payoffs, you know, but I've never seen it where it, it is actually a mobster has gone into the police force. And I was just like, my mind just went... Because I, I was just so surprised by the storyline of this and I liked that. I hadn't been shocked for a very long time and I, I just thought it was really refreshing. And also another thing that I was completely shocked and just mouth dropped, what? The bad guy won. Yes, what? I walked out. That never happened. When the, I like literally opened the door, my partner was still working and I was just like, he died? <laughs> I was just, I was rooting for him. I I was so invested in him getting his identity back and I was cut. I was just like, I was, and it happened so fast and so unexpected. Like they were in the elevator and I'm like, yeah, he's going to like, you know, try and find his way out of the building. But as soon as the elevator door went, bang, it was a bullet. And I was just not expecting that. And I was so heartbroken that that person won. And he was the one that got even like the police superintendent I think that's what title he was. I'm not sure what the grade mm-hmm. was, but I was just like, what? I was still was shocked so by the ending of that film. It was just, and, you know, the acting was, a, I, I'm going to say it was a little bit hokey, the acting, and a little mm. bit soap opera acting, especially from the female actresses. I feel like they were a very soap, soap opera looking at the camera, single tear. I didn't yeah, feel like that I they did, had I any think, oomph in that film. I think, though, for the female characters in that film, I actually thought, so, for instance, you have Sammy Chang play Mary, the, um, the partner, and I feel like for her character, she was only there for two purposes. One, it was to show how far, you know, Inspector Lau Kin Mm -hmm. Um, how far he got in life you know he had everything he had the house he had the girl he had the job he was a mob guy getting payoffs you know like it was to show he had that step and to make him appear normal right but then her second the only reason she was there is Mm -hmm. she was writing a book about someone with um, split personalities and it was and she was just I guess almost to be that that reference point to to either drag Lau Kin's mind back to, am I good, am I bad? Or is it also to drag the audience in, is he good or bad, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was the only purpose she was there. And then as for the doctor, which I have a fun fact. Mm, Yes, please. Mm -hmm. But I'll get to the fun fact after I finish what I was going to say. But the doctor, she was there, she was sort of the same, I guess, 
reference point in that film for Chen Wing Yan because he needed to like he knew he was getting torn into two like mm-hmm. he was pretty self-aware and she was his grounding point mm-hmm. to help remind him of what it is he needed to be reminded of not that he partaked very often in his sessions he can I thought- come and sleep on your couch tonight <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but the fun fact I have, the psychiatrist's name, Lee Sum Yi, is a homophone in Cantonese for your psychiatrist. Wow. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. But this film, I absolutely loved it. I, it was so intense. I, I never thought I'd feel that intense because I was actually quite tired when I started it and I thought, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to have to really focus on reading now. <laughs> and then I was sucked in from the story from the beginning especially like in the intro when you're like whoa it's like a double double mole story here and then it was intense this this actual camera shots were stunning Mm -hmm. especially the tops of the buildings when they utilized it because I, I feel like they chose the right buildings to shoot off the top of and you had like a clear shot of the rest of the city. You didn't have anything obstructing your view or anything. It was just such a clean shot. And especially the last scene when he's got the gun out to him. Yeah. Beautiful. And I, I can see why it's like their poster shot because it's just framed so beautifully. I I was absolutely heartbroken when Superintendent Wong died. I know. I was so so sad because I was like he is one of the only ones that knows that you're a cop yes. and that if anybody gets that you're gonna lose mm. your identity and I was like my, I, know, my, I, I was thought that ripped. Too. my hands were so tight I was like oh I just I want you to leave I want you to get your identity back and then, so like, much it was so dramatic too like the way he smashed into the car and the car just had the biggest indent and then mm. when they were talking about like what they did to him in the car and it was just like Oh man, they like they didn't spare any expense, but Mm-mm. I actually talking about um Superintendent Wong, I actually really liked his character. I thought mm-hmm. he was incredibly switched on, which for someone in that position I think you need to be. Yes. Um and I thought it was really apparent in the scene in the first scene where they've got the big like drug exchange with the ties that come in and they're using Morse code. He's obviously listening, he's got the two connected. Um, but you can see how switched on and focused he is because, A, he can hear what's happening in one ear, and, B, he's already figured out that um, Lau Kin was the, like, he already had his suspicions about him. But, th- like, I thought straight away, oh, he must know it's him. But then later on he almost seems a little too trusting, but mm-hmm. I-, I feel like he was more switched on in this, um, and I really, I thought that really added to his character as a strong character, which was which made it so much more heartbreaking when he did die. And then the especially, uh, oh, sorry, especially no, when he was going to give him, he's like, it's your birthday. I know it is. You know, even if you want to act tough, I know it's your birthday. We've been at it a long time. And he got him the gift and then, and then he died. So the whole time I was just thinking, I want to learn Morse code. I really want to learn Morse code now because it's just like interesting that little taps, you know, can oh, it was just I really liked that idea of having the Morse code in there. I thought it was really cool as well that the password for undercover agent mm-hmm. in Morse code was the password to get into it, and I'm like, oh, of course, <laughs> but no one <laughs> knew that's how they can communicated. Wow, I didn't know that. I loved this film. I really want to continue on with the quadrilogy. Yes, okay. Before so I'm gonna move yeah. On, how many uh, movie reels do you give this one? Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to continue on with the quadrilogy. I'm really excited to know what happened. I'm going to give this movie a four out of five. Nice. I'm actually going to give this one a 4.5 because it just it stunned me at every turn. I was shocked. I was surprised. I'd watch it again. It was great. Before you ask me the big question, I have a big question mm-hmm. to ask you. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. You put me on the spot now. My question is, do you think that Inspector Lau Kim was good? Like, do you think that... No, nah, um, 100% nah. no. Because, okay. and do you know what his defining point is mm-hmm. to me? Mm-hmm. Um, even though when he was had the gun pointed at him, he's like, I want to turn a new leaf. No. He immediately, like, to me, to know that he was bad, he even shot the guy that was also in Hon Sam's group. 
you know, and he's like, oh, we've got to stick together and bang. He shot him without a, a second hesitation. And to me, that he's just bad character, rotten to the core. One other thing before we move on. I loved the fact that at the end, Chen Wing Yang got to be oh. in, in the grave next to Wong Ching Sing. Like that. I know. Was I like that. found out that he was a good guy all along. Yeah, because the doctor had his file and his details. But I really hated that um, Inspector Lao Kian Ming was there and he had to give him, like, I think he gave he, or I think he gave him um he went up and gave him a moment of silence but I think it'll always be a reminder to him of who he really is like the mirror in his face sort of thing but yeah. I just like that I like that he did in death get his identity back I just wanted him to have that in real life and then meet his daughter I know that was but yeah uh, this movie is actually stuck with me yeah yeah I mean, it was great. I love it. That's why I said 4.5. I'd watch it again. It was so, ref- like, refreshing. I haven't – actually, I'd actually up that. I'm going to up it to 4.75 because when I think about my recent ratings and I do put, like, a movie, if I've seen it regularly, I rate it four. But, like, this one had so many shock, like shocks to me and plot twists that I wasn't expecting. And that just boosts it for me because I haven't had a reaction like that to a film in a very long time. So I'm going to change it to 4.75. Good job. But the time is, what do you think this got on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to guess 94. Did you check this? No, I did not. Did I get it? it. Yes. Did I really like First Go? Yes. On the spot. On the spot. That's wicked. And I was you know almost going to go awesome? 98. But I was the, like, actual, the actual oh. audience score is 95. So oh, they're, wow. they're very close on par. Oh, wow. Virtual high five. Boing. But, like, yes. it's oh my God. amazing. I'm, you're talking and I'm just like, shut up. I just actually, like, <laughs> feel like I want something because <laughs> I got it first go. That's so awesome. good, though. We're getting better. We got our groove back. But also, I don't think this movie deserves anything less. 100% agreed. It's an amazing film and it belongs up the top there. But let's move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. The Departed, 2006. An undercover cop and a mole in the police attempt to identify each other while infiltrating an Irish gang in South Boston. I have stuff to say on this. I enjoyed this movie so much. Same. However, I did not – I felt it was a bit on the nose that it was, you know, Italian mafia versus the cops. Like, I felt like – I actually that thought was that was – it was probably more accurate at the time, especially because I think it, it starts off in – didn't quote me on this – the 60s, I think. Quote, quote, quote. <laughs> yeah, like, it starts off there, and you know that – Even in Ireland and the UK, I think throughout, again, don't quote me on my history on this, I'm just spitballing here, but like the 70s and that, you had the IRA, you had all the bombings. Yes, because The Exorcist was filmed in the 70s and we discovered from a fun fact that they got bombed at one point on one of their locations, so it was the 70s. Um, And I actually thought, if anything, it was more, like it was closer to depict that gang at that time because they were active. Again, even though I saw the Hong Kong version first, yeah. I was still, oh my God, the entire movie. Because, oh, were you? yeah, I was like, what, what? Even though I knew what was happening, I was still on the edge of my seat. And like, Leonardo DiCaprio, he's an amazing actor. And so is mm-hmm. Matt Damon. And then you've got Jack Nicholson, Mark Wahlberg, Martin Sheen. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I, I was shocked at how many people were in this. I actually thought at first, <laughs> I thought Mark War- Warburg was a dick, part of my language, but then his character really grew on me. Mm-hmm. And then I thought more and more, and I'm like, you know what, I love you. You're actually a really good character. And it was handy to have the two of them. Uh, Although, can I just say that Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg look so he similar? so similar. I thought that and, all the time. And I was just like, wait, wait. I had to, like, sometimes just think, wait, who? <laughs> because they do look so similar. Also, one thing 
I keep saying one thing. Another thing that I like better in this film is the fact that they had Vera Firminga who I played her. um I know same as she she played She's Madeline. So beautiful. I thought they did a better job of combining the three women from Infernal Affairs to making it one character mm-hmm. so you didn't have that doctor you didn't have the um the girlfriend you didn't have the wife they were all just one person and I like that she was also part of it because she was you know seeing both of them I really yeah. liked that yeah I mean I thought it was good um you know they tied it all up with one and you know Leonardo DiCaprio's character still did have a child at the end because obviously it was alluded to that she was pregnant with that child but I liked that there wasn't a super strong romantic connection in the original. Like in this one, it just, I feel like there was a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there were the scenes where they, they'd be flirting either of them with her and then there would be the dates and then there would be, you know, them getting together. And I just Mm -hmm. thought there was a lot of that compared to the original. And so they, like, they really had to introduce this new character in, whereas a lot of the other characters are quite similar to, to already characters in the infernal affairs but for me with this one there were scenes where I also was on edge as well um if anything it just seemed so much more rough especially Jack Nicholson's character it really showed you that regardless of who you were man woman child like he would have shot you and it just showed you no mercy at all and from the beginning he was a dirtbag like look at the way he spoke to the girl the young girl at the register like you know, you could tell from the beginning that he was not a very nice man. I liked the idea that they introduced Matt Damon's character as a young boy, whereas in mm-hmm. uh, Infernal Affairs they're older, and then he sends them off into the police academy because for that I feel like he's got a, a stronger connection to Jack Nicholson's character, mm-hmm. um, which makes it harder for him to do what he did. But as I've mentioned, I already thought that this character was a bad guy anyway, so he did it without hesitation. Like every time you looked there was another character another mate like another amazing character there was you know sorry an amazing actor I was not expecting Alec Baldwin and I just they Alec Baldwin and Matt Damon had such great chemistry with each other as well I hated them like they just Matt Damon's character Matt Damon Matt Damon I just, and especially the way he talked to Vera, her character in that, and I just thought, you are a real asshole. How does anyone like you? And I really got turned off of that character, which made me want Leonardo DiCaprio to win, but obviously I knew what was going to happen. So I was just. I was not expecting that mm, ending. I know. I'm sorry, we're like jumping straight into the ending, but yeah, I was okay. like. Good, what? I got to go what? there, because I was already what? like heartbroken in the original. Oh. That he died, but then to see justice and to see Mark Wahlberg just come in and go bang, you're you're gone too. I'm like, yes, it sweet I, justice. But do you think Mark Wahlberg was a good guy or a bad guy? Because um, even though you know he killed, I think from the get go he was always one of those guys. Like, I just think it from like he was honest that you know he was rough, but he would do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of the division he was in, he may have had to go in roundabout ways to get to the right part. I think the reason he did what he did is because, A, he knew he knew that he was the dirty cop. Yeah. And he also was the one that killed Michael Sheen's character in that. Michael I got yeah. so sad about that one I as could well. not connect to him. I'm, he was actually someone I couldn't connect to in that film. I actually connected really? more to um, Superintendent Wong than I did with him. Really? Yeah, I just feel like he seemed very incompetent. Like, when I saw the two of them together, him and Mark Wahlberg, they didn't make sense as a duo, right? Because Mark Wahlberg mm-hmm. was flying off, and I, I thought, you're a real butthole. I don't like you. <laughs> you are mean. Um, and especially when they were trying to, like, enroll Leonardo DiCaprio, and it's like, why put him through that? You're trying to ask him for something. Ask him. Don't berate him in front of, like, his senior and, like, Michael Sheen's character didn't really do anything, but they wanted him to help anyway. So I just thought that they didn't – it didn't work right. And then the whole way through the film, he's constantly bullying Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Michael Sheen does nothing. Like, at some point, if I was the senior – and, you know, 
Leonardo DiCaprio had been there for quite some time at this point. I think they shortened the time in this one. It was only 12 months as opposed to Infernal Affairs, which was like four years. Yeah. So like he's already like, it's been 12 months. Like you've been in contact with this person for that long and you're still going to treat him like shit. If I was his superior, I'd be like, you can just piss off if you're not going to act your age and do your damn job. You know, like at some point, sorry for my language in this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but like, yeah, I just feel I couldn't connect to the, to Michael Sheen, and I actually didn't find his death that sad compared to I was more cut with Superintendent Wong than I was. With oh, Michael that Sheen. was that was bad with Superintendent. I agree in the fact that it was sadder in the Infernal Affairs, but also I I just like I liked this movie even though it was way more violent than I was expecting. Oh yeah, I was not expecting how violent. Like this especially was. with the uh, broken arm scene where he just. Oh, uh, I got realized that I have made a mistake. It's not Michael Sheen. It's Martin Sheen. Oh, that's all right. Michael that's Sheen. That's on me, proud. guys. I got that one wrong. And um, I should refer to his character's name. If I'm referring to Superintendent Wong, his name is Queen In. Shame. Disappointed. Uh, I know, yeah. Sorry, can I go back to you? I just had to correct myself there. Uh, one of the scenes that really was like, oh, for me, was when he ha- when Leonardo DiCaprio came <gasps> in. I know exactly where you're going. broken arm. Yeah, that was bad. And I was just like... And he was oh. feeding it with the shoe? Oh, man, I felt the pain. Mm-hmm. That was just, oh, my gosh. Sorry the... for everyone there, as Steph was trying to describe that. All she did was hold her arm, and I knew exactly where she was going with that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> it was... Uh, that was terrible. And also... I'm going to quickly mention one scene that I think also was better in in The Departed versus Infernal Affairs was when they were on the – one of them – I can't remember. I'm so sorry. One of them was on the bus, and they – and he has the um, – The phone, phone scene? Yes. Oh, you I thought it was that, better in I this one. I thought it was a lot better because the other one, The Infernal Affairs, had so much, like, music and intense – coming over that you thought you know yeah this one got really ding. quiet this I actually thought they were violent. both pretty equal they had they they were both achieving the same effect of raising the intensity of like oh my god who's calling from a dead man's phone mm-hmm. but they achieved it in two different ways one was with the intensity and there was a bit of conversation in mm-hmm. the one on the bus like because he freaked out and he answered and he said hello, hello. and hello. um but then in the departed it was just silence and that was even freakier because it's like oh my god who's on the other end of the dead man's phone like yeah i thought they both achieved the same result just done in very different like extreme ends i yeah i again i thoroughly enjoyed this movie i loved going on that ride that was one of the best roller coasters i've ever been on yeah, I have to say with The Departed, I'm going to talk about camera shots here. So I, I mentioned mm-hmm. it in Infernal Affairs how beautiful the scenery shots on the rooftops were. I actually feel they failed in this one a little bit, especially mm-hmm. in the last shot. It was much more intense. Like when Leonardo DiCaprio came out and he was kicking the door shut and he's yelling in, and I thought, man, this is a guy who's ready to snap. He knows he's coming close to getting his identity. He's just ready to go. It wasn't like a clean shot across the city, and I, I really noticed that. Like, I really noticed all the buildings in the view and constricting that view. Um, I actually feel like Infernal Affairs wins that one. So I think with The Departed, something else that was really, really good and really striking that stood out to me is the mm-hmm. opening scene. I tried searching to find actual definitive evidence if it was a legitimate recording or if Mm -hmm. they'd filmed it because I thought wow that looks like an actual legitimate riot that had been filmed in either the 60s or the 70s or Mm brawl not so much Mm -hmm. a riot footage like that and I I actually found seeing real footage like that at the beginning so much more intense and it's like it immediately set the tone for me it was just like oh this is going to be an intense film and I actually liked that addition at the beginning Mm -hmm. I have to admit I did get very over it when I think it come to the like two hour mark. I'm like, I am it was so a ready very, it was very, very long. Yeah. But what did you think of Costello versus Hon Sam, the bad, the boss? 
Oh, that's tough because you're talking about two different countries here. So, you know, very different. I guess they'd be acting very differently. Mm-hmm. Hong Sam was such a little guy. <laughs> so tiny. I know. He was intimidating and he had like crazy eyes and I wouldn't have messed with him. But Jack Nicholson is He's also such he an has, amazing actor. Yeah, and he had the same equal effect. But I think I think it's very hard to compare the two. You know, people might say probably Jack Nicholson, but you know, he's up to the violence in his one. But it's the it's being in a Western country, it's being in, in like you know Irish gangs, what they're mm-hmm. known for. But I feel like with Hong San, like he didn't need to be that, and he was still intimidating. Like with the food mm-hmm. scene, and he was that smug to be like, yeah. I'm a boss, I'm a boss, and I'm going to eat my Chinese food here while you think you've arrested me. And then to flick it, like, that was intimidating. I thought that was, that was like, you're a boss, bro. Yeah. Like, that was, uh, all I could think of was the meme of, like, the, the shades coming down like a boss. So. Yes, that's right. I was just, and, like, two very different extreme responses, you know, and I, I just feel like it's really hard to compare that because I think they both did that really well. I think, yes, I agree. I enjoyed this movie so much. And I am so glad that you got to, that I got to watch this and that it was your choice because I definitely would not have chosen this movie. I wouldn't have chosen it either, but I've been trying to break out of my usual routine. So I'm, I'm trying to pick things that I wouldn't pick. <laughs> And upcoming episodes are things that I wouldn't normally pick That's either. That's right. I'm actually really excited with what we've got this year. So I do. I, me, Steph, has chosen horror films. I know. I am so keen. But it's also forced me to stop picking them because then we've got like double the amount of horror films, which is fine by me, but I would just want to This is that not up. a horror podcast. No, it's not. If only for you. So I want to read you something that I thought summed and collated my thoughts on the two so perfectly that I feel it warrants it to be said. Uh, It's an article that was written by Margaret Pereira on a film school rejects, and the title was called Infernal Affairs and the Departed, How to Do a Remake Right. Now, this is just a small portion of it, Mm -hmm. but I think it it sums it up perfectly when when you hear it. So... Quote, The Departed has almost an hour longer runtime than Infernal Affairs, but that fact is a credit to both films. Scorsese's operatic approach is not indulgent, and Lau and Max's tight, punchy storyline isn't rushed. We should be asking for more out of our Hollywood remakes, and The Departed is, in many ways, a perfect example of how to do a remake right. The basic plot and even some specific story beats were grafted onto a new idea, so you get two distinct artistic endpoints. There's so much to get out of each film, but neither one steps on the other's toes. Infernal Affairs are spectacular, and The Departed is an absolute masterclass in a remake. Oh, my God. Again, I'm just going to mention Margaret Pereira, article on Film School Rejects, titled... Infernal Affairs and The Departed, How to Do a Remake, right? And she, and mwah, mwah, I'm going to give you chef kisses on that. Chef. Yes, because that perfectly summed it up. They were, they're very different, but in the same way, they were both perfect. And I think, again, compliments to Hollywood for once for actually mm. doing something right. This is a great example of remakes done right i yeah. i loved both of these movies i will definitely watch both of them again and i'm totally going to watch the um the sequels to infernal affairs the quadrilogy the quadrilogy thank you i keep forgetting <laughs> our word i don't even think that's correct that's our new word What's the one thing you learned from the from the uh, Departed episode. episode of Nerdazons? Hashtag quadrilogy. <laughs> Hashtag quadrilogy. Let's start. That is a new trend. Yeah. Also, this is the whole month where remakes have, have done really well. We've yeah. chosen well for this month. We really have. I cannot fault either movie, to be honest. I mean, yes, they both, you know, have little – the acting in Infernal Affairs was a bit – some scenes and you know in the departed did go a little bit too long but i think 
it made up for it in the acting. It made up for it, even though it was a violent movie, yeah. it was done well. Yeah, you know, I think, yes. Yeah, for me, I think the same, like, as I've mentioned, I loved Infernal Affairs. That was just, wow, like 4.75. I think it's one of my highest rated. Um, mm-hmm. I really loved it. Departed, like, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. And I'm glad I watched it. It was just long. <laughs> Probably wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again. And um, usually when I do the comparisons, I tend to watch them straight after each other. So that way it's still fresh in my mind. Yeah. And, like, I can still, I can go, oh, yeah, okay, boom, boom, boom. But this one I had to wait because cause in Infernal Affairs just – I went in having really high hopes for The Departed because everybody's told me it's an incredible film, but also because it was such a, like, an early 2000s film. Mm -hmm. I was going in going, oh, I think I'm going to go in disappointed, you know. I don't want to get my high hopes up. So I kind of was, is it going to be good? It's either going to be ridiculously good or terrible. It's not going to be in the middle. And I am so glad. Like, this is mwah, compliments for the remake. Yeah, I really liked the remake. Um, I just think a bit long for me. A few characters I didn't really connect with. But apart from that, it was really good. Like, I think Scorsese's films are brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, every one that I've watched so far, I've really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always violent. There's always, like, an operatic approach to it. Almost like a delicate beauty to them, to the violence, if you mm-hmm. if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I don't tend to go out of my way to re-watch his films. Unless, say, like, you know, I, I flicked a channel and it was on, I'd probably watch the rest of it. Yeah, it's just, they're just very long films for me. Not saying that I hate it. The fact that no. I wouldn't re-watch it is not going to bring its points down, See, I don't think. See, I liked that it was violent, but it wasn't Quentin Tarantino violent. Oh, I love Tarantino films. Tarantino I, I like violence Tarantino. is so over the top that you don't flinch when you see something. Whereas with Scorsese's, it was violent, but it was so realistic, especially when he was beating his arm, oh. you know, things like that. Like that to me made me flinch, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was just, ugh. Just thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like wrapping my arm, going, mm, you're, "You're okay. You're okay." <laughs> but what a smart idea to have like a camera or a microphone in your broken arm. I would not have thought to have something in there. I that would be the first place I'd be looking if I was looking for a mole. Really? I I've never and broken especially an arm, knowing know. that he was an ex-cop, I'd be like, "It's wired or something." <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Spish. Oh, but that just, whew, that that still gives that me thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, how many movie reels do you give this one? I'm giving it the same 4.5 because right. I they uh, I can't choose one over the other. I think that they're just both in incredible films. I, I'm a bit different. I can choose one over the other, and I'd watch Infernal Affairs again. Mm-hmm. And I really did like that one a lot. Mm-hmm. I did get bored at one point. I wanted it to finish. I think it was also because I was very tired <laughs> when I was watching it. Um, but I'd probably give this one a 4.2. So only like a 0.5 difference because I think it was it was done beautifully. I still think it, it should be ranked that higher, even if I probably wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again. I think it deserves to be there. But I actually did prefer Infernal Affairs over the other, so... Big question, though. Let's see if you can get two for two. If you did, I'm going to be sus. Jokes. <laughs> I'm just putting my hands up so you know that I'm not looking at anything. <laughs> I believe you. I'm just being a dick. I know you are, but I'm just, like, I'm proving a point. So um, that way my phone's feel, not in my hand, nothing. I need to just make a, an apology for this episode. I feel like I have had very bad language. but Disgusting. I know. Terrible. But... Okay. What do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to go 92. That was close. Oh! I, was, I was expecting you to go really high. Um, This one actually got 90%. Oh, wow. You didn't even so, let me get a second go. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, sorry. So now I guess I just wanted to show 90%. you. That, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just I, – I was keen to tell you, like, that Infernal Affairs got higher. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, thank you. I'm going to say mwah, compliments to the, she- to the chef for choosing this episode. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but 
shall we move on to Nerdisons Nerdy Notables? I went and saw the Hamilton play. Oh yeah, how was that? Oh my god, it was amazing. I didn't even let you finish your sentence. <laughs> I know, I know, it was so good. I went and saw the Hamilton play in Sydney. It is one of the only locations at the moment that is playing it. Uh, just for overseas listeners, it is we do have open standards during COVID to go and see these things. So it was all completely compliant. We kept our masks on. It was a full house, which I was shocked. Um, wow. Completely sold out. It was incredible. Obviously, if you watch the original on Disney Plus, you know, nothing is going to beat that. <laughs> but the, it was incredible. I would go back and see that again any day if I had the chance. But see, I'm not into American politics. I wasn't into it either until I watched that. And then, this is a segue on to my next point, mm-hmm. I've been watching the Paul Giamatti series, um, mini-series called John Adams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was done back in, like, 2004. But it's um, set around the second president. So the Hamilton play obviously is embellished around Alexander Hamilton. This series is embellished around John Adams. Mm-hmm. So that? I the second president. Oh. <laughs> Again, I know nothing about American politics. It's fine. Like you don't have to oh, it's two thousand and eight, sorry. Mm-hmm. Not two thousand and four. Um you don't have to know. It's it if it doesn't interest you you don't have to watch it. I definitely but, still think you should watch the recording of Hamilton because it was even the choreography alone and the way it was written and the songs is incredible. I'm kind of tempted to watch the Hamilton on Disney because it does have... I don't recommend. Okay, well, it does have Jonathan Groff in it, who was actually jo- uh, Jonathan, uh, sorry, Jesse St. James in Glee. Yes. But he was also in Mindhunter and he was oh. also Christoph in of Frozen. Really? Yeah. I didn't know he was in Frozen. Yeah. I knew he was Jesse St. James, but I didn't know he was in Frozen. I but think also, I like has, three episodes of Glee. I was pretty into it, like, in the first two seasons, and then I stopped, I think, after that. But it also has Lynn manuel Miranda in it. So he also has a new film coming out I really want to see called Into the Heights. Um, mm-hmm. And you know that Lynn manuel wrote the music for yes. Moana, right? Yes. Yeah. So he's, he's just a genius. He, he really... Is needs to just keep writing music (laughs) so you don't need to know anything about it I didn't I was first (laughs) exposed to the Hamilton play through Family Guy Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a really funny scene with Stewie at like a psychiatrist's office (laughs) and he's singing it and he's all like snooty face and um the psychiatrist is uh, Sir Ian McKellen. So it's a really mm-hmm. funny clip, and I strongly recommend anyone to Google or YouTube that and just watch it because it's funny. That's how I found out about it. And my partner, who knows a lot about everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> filled me in on the story. And uh, and then when it finally came out, which we didn't even know it was happening, but mm-hmm. when we saw that it was coming out on Disney+, Plus, we found a copy of it and just had a movie night and watched it. And I was just like, what? I wasn't expecting the soundtrack to be that amazing. And it was just so incredible. I remember incredible. when you, when you saw it, you were just like, we need to listen to this song. And you were just like, p- just would not shut up about Hamilton. That's when we did the Little Shop of Horrors, I yeah. think. Yeah, because yeah. I had both songs stuck in my head. It's not even the soundtrack. Like, when you watch... Hamilton mm-hmm. you know like there's it's it's got so many different scenes so many different points in in the story and the choreographer dances part of their job is you know changing the chairs and the scenery mid song and it just floats like one of the best parts is a song a song where they talk about being like in the eye of a hurricane and the dances the way they just move really slowly around the stage it just really made you feel like you were standing there in the middle of a hurricane I'm like the choreography is incredible I think you may have convinced me. Seriously, you need to watch it. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Also, because Um, I'm a huge fan of musicals. Yes. Guess what I'm going to go see. Ah, I'm so excited. Are you going to see, let me try and guess. No. No, I'm trying to think what else is out. Is it coming up? Because I know Phantom of the Opera is coming up and I really want to. No, but I really want to go to Phantom of the Opera. Can we please go to the opera together? Oh, are you going to go? Sorry, I've just cut you off. Are you going to go and see American Psycho? I really want to. <laughs> and I said yeah, to my friend, I, I, just, I, 
I said, oh my gosh, I want to go see. She's like, I've already got my tickets. I'm like, oh, no, I'm using my um, Dine and Discover vouchers because I've got to use them before the end of the month. Wicked is playing at the Riverside Theatre. Oh, nice. Yeah, go on. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Musicals, I like, I would love to go and see pretty much, like, any musical that comes out or plays. I love seeing them, like, um, live shows. But they're just so expensive. See, um, that's why I like Riverside Theatre in Parramatta because it, it they're really good quality and that they are on par to, you know, big productions and yeah. they're very cheap. So, um, but, sleepover. <laughs> but just to back on that point, though, because even like pre-COVID when we were getting loads of, you know, plays throughout all of Sydney, you know, be it at the Opera House, Lyric Theatre, Capital Theatre. Mm-hmm. Yep, the other one. So, like, even rotating between all of them, like, it just, it's very expensive. And if you were, if you were going to go and see them all the time. So, with this one, we knew for sure we were going to see it as soon as yeah. we knew it was coming. Well, actually, I think I pre-signed up. I think you can pre-sign up to pre-sale through Ticket Deck or Ticketmaster. Mm-hmm. One of them, you can sign up even if a whisper comes out to say that there's going to be pre-sale. So I think I, I knew that if I ever found whisper out, I was going to see desire. Yeah. But, yeah, so I saw that. I have been just re-watching uh, the first two Conjuring films. So I bought my tickets to <laughs> go and see the third one this weekend in the cinema. Um, mm-hmm. That's really it for me. Um, I started a new show that my friends are like, you need to watch it. It's so good. So – I love English comedies. Me too. Um, and there's one on Stern that I've been watching called um, This Country. And it's a hilarious cult sitcom series which takes the mockumentary format to explore the lives of young people in modern rural Britain, focusing on cousins Kerry and Lee Curtin and their life experience in the typical Coswold village. And it is just so funny. So it's it's so wrong as well so these two they're actually brother and sister in real life but these cousins they're like they're like we're just best mates you know um you know why he's my best mate because I love chocolate but I hate bounty and whenever we get a celebration packet he eats the bounties (laughs) and then he's like you know I don't really like bounties I feel like that they're the underdog nobody else wants them so that's kind of why I eat the bounties (laughs) and it's just like oh and then I'm just and Googling that, it now. And that there's a scene where this guy, he's got terminal cancer and he loves um, Kerry so much. I've seen and, the ad for this. Yep, yep. And, and I she, wanted to see it. Yes. The, even the tra- – sorry, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but I remember seeing the trailer for this thinking that is that looks funny. I have to watch it. Well, and then yeah, I just so got to it. This terminally ill guy is, like, obsessed with Kerry. And then she's out the front and she's like, Mum. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I've got to go, my mum needs me. And then you just go, all right, mum, I'm coming. Nobody's there. But she's like, <laughs> can't he have something better on his bucket list? Like, it's just, it's so wrong, but so good. It's so uh, good. I'm, I think this is one that I will watch because I, and I remember seeing it and then six, it just slipped my mind. Six episodes per season, three seasons. Perfect. I love that yep. about UK yep. shows. Yeah, they, they, they know when to stop and they know when they've had a good thing. Yeah, I like that about it. So let's talk about next month. Mm -hmm. So next month I am doing a listener's choice, which is actually Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original from the 90s, to its remake in, I'm going to guess, 2014 here with Mm -hmm. Megan Fox. So it is both the live action ones, not the cartoon one they did. And then... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, And I am doing Mortal Kombat. The 1986 version or 19... I like. (laughs) I don't... Yeah, no, I I liked this one as well. And everyone Um, pants it. Well, I have Next month is going to be interesting. I haven't seen the new one yet. And I have not seen the original Mortal Kombat in such a long time. I love that. So this is going to be a big change for me because I have not seen it since I was like knee high to grasshopper so yep. and then i haven't seen the new new one yet yeah i haven't seen um, the new one yet either. so it's coming out on a digital i think in a few days so i'm gonna watch yep. that when it comes out i'm really keen because i remember the original being super hokey so fingers crossed 
Yeah. That it. Oh, fingers crossed. I guess you'll find out uh, next episode. Yes. So if you want to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, if you want to hear, if you want to send us an email at nerdazons at outlook.com, if you want to listen to us, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts. And just remember, hashtag, hashtag quadrilogy. Hashtag, hashtag quadrilogy. <laughs> And stay nerdy.